Harry, let's start with you. Talk to me about how Mark Meadows fits into the special counsel investigation and what it tells you that in Georgia, according to the four women, he pled the fifth over and over again. He fits everywhere, top to bottom, side to side. He is the guy who is without doubt the most important person for January 6th itself, but then before and after. He's he's down in Georgia when they're, when they're giving false uh, reports to the legislature. He is the point of control for all the members of Congress who are calling up on and before January 6th. He's told Cassidy Hutchinson and others about Trump's uh, plans, about why, you know, the Trump thinks Pence should be hanged. He is, without doubt, the most important witness, so much so, um, Alicia, that it's not clear that the Department of Justice would give him immunity, which is what's going to come up. Because now that his claim, Trump's claim, really, of executive privilege has been rejected, that can still go up on appeal, but they should make quick work of it, because they've already rejected it four times with four different people. Now we can expect him to take the fifth and set up a showdown where DOJ either has to charge him uh, or give him immunity. And But either either way, the idea is at the end of the day, he testify he's the most important person for the whole welter of January 6 crimes. The most important person. He also, I mean, Ryan, he is the most recognizable to a, a lot of folks. If we want to pull back up that graphic of the eight people who now are going to have to testify, I want to layer into that the fact that you have former vice president uh, Mike Pence also in a legal battle over his subpoena to testify. And you have reporting for NBC News that reads, quote, lawyers for Trump argue Pence can't testify about their dealings surrounding the riot at the Capitol because of, dun, 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 executive privilege. Pence has argued he's immune from testifying because of legal protections for lawmakers because he was acting as president of the Senate during the January 6th electoral college vote count rather than as a member of the executive branch. I'm going to come back to Harry on this speech and debate clause thing here, but I wonder from you, Ryan, where this legal fight goes next. I mean, you know, a lot of this is all happening, obviously, behind those doors, but I do think it's remarkable that the, the position that Pence has taken here, because, you know, of course, he's written a book about all of this at this point, right? Like, that's sort of, that's sort of the, the, the wild thing about this, this idea that he doesn't want to testify. And the reality of that is that this is all political, right? Like, Pence still thinks he has a shot at 2024, which, good luck in this uh, in this environment in terms of, uh, you know, making it any way. And he's, I just doesn't seem like he has a... a a snowball's chance in hell of making it through a primary, given how a lot of Republican voters feel about him and how they feel about January 6th. But sure, if that's what he wants to say uh, that this is about, then he can go that route. But that's really what, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of sad, right, that he thinks he can write a book about this and, and you know, profit off of that book, but, you know, don't want to be able to testify before a grand jury about what, you know, actually happened, about a serious investigation that's looking into us. And, you know, if you look back to right after January 6th, I think that the thing that is, is is sort of frustrating is that you've had a lot of individuals in the Republican Party saying, oh, okay, let the let the process play out. Let's go to uh, you know the courts and the investigation and this this we can't do impeachment, we can't rush impeachment, uh, yada yada. And then in reality, you know, here's where we are now, right? We're we're more than two years down the road and and we're still trying to get out of the gate with maybe an investigation here. And, you know, the clock and the statute of limitations is ticking in terms of uh, uh, bringing those charges. And then you see what um, Donald Trump is doing about a separate investigation in, in New York and the way he's been able to attack that. And, you know, now he has the ability to claim that he's a um, he's a presidential candidate. And, you know, that's why they had to have a special counsel set up. So I, I just think that there is there's this constant hope that we're always like, you know, oh, this has got to be the thing that finally gets old Donald Trump. And that's you know, I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that's where we're we're going to land at, uh, after all of this. Because I think that you know, political leaders fail to hold Donald Trump accountable when they had the opportunity to. Um, uh, right after this all happened, when there was a lot of nationwide anger and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bipartisan anger about uh, what. What Donald Trump actually did, even if it didn't match the exact criminal statute that you could pull out of a book. So I don't know where this all ends up, um, but it, it's not it's not great for the country.